Having come to himself, Moses began his life of repentance. And repentance is making a U-turn in the direction that we're going. And so it's doing something different than what we should do. And repentance is not a one-time event either. It is something that we should be striving for every day. And so his gluttony, because he was a powerful glutton, he began to fast. He was making a U-turn, doing something opposite. And because he stole from people and took things, and um, he began to give. Just as he gave to those who visited his cell, he began to um, give, take water to the elder monks. He'd go gather their, wine, their water skins and their jugs and take them to the well or the creek and fill them and then carry them back. And he'd spend all night long doing that. He began to give where he had taken. And where he was angry and had resentment, he prayed for those that angered him. And he become their adversary, not their adversary, their intercessor. <laughs> and so Moses replaced his bad habits with good tendencies. And this was a struggle. It wasn't that he didn't get angry with people. But then he'd fight hard to pray for them and to forgive. Even the act of forgiving is an important act of repentance. Do you have somebody that's hurt you or abused you or said false things about you? Are you still ready to punch them out? But then we're in need of repenting. Even though what they did might have been purely evil, for us to harbor anger and our heart poisons us. There was a story, I mean a true story that I read, and this is kind of graphic, about a reserve where they had monkeys and all kinds of African animals in the reserve. And one of the mother monkeys, the baby died. But the mother monkey climbed down, picked the baby up and kept it. Would not face the fact that that baby was dead. And after a few weeks, that baby began to rot. And the keepers tried to get that baby from that mother monkey and couldn't. Until finally the maggots began to eat into the mother's chest. And she got so sick that she fell down from the tree. And fortunately the keepers were able to separate the rotting baby from the mother and heal her. And why would I tell you such an awful story? Yeah, because that's what resentment does in our hearts. When we cling to re resentment, we are imitating that mother monkey. <laughs> because it's poison to us. Resentment is like drinking poison and hoping that the person that you hate dies. And so forgiveness is a key part of repentance. One day when Moses was busy praying, Four thieves rushed in upon him, expecting him to cower, and they, they could rob him. And then he stood up, and they saw that they are rushing in upon a giant. And he subdued all four of them and put all four of them on his shoulders <laughs> and walked to the church and said, I caught these men in an act of robbery, and I, being a penitent, am not fit to chastise them. Tell me what to do with them. Well, the fathers at Skeeda said, well, we don't know. But the, but the thieves, finding out that this was Moses, repented and stayed at the monastery and began to follow Moses as their example. Well, one day, something very sad happened. Moses was at the water gathering water into his jugs and skins when a demon, furious that he had lost hold on this man, whacked him in the back with a huge branch and Moses fell down half dead. And the next morning, monks coming to get water found him there 
and carried him back to his spiritual father, the abbot. And it took a long time for Moses to even be able to stand again. And even when he did, he never regained his strength that he had had early on. This became a cross for him. And so he always limped after that and was always stooped somewhat because of that blow. Now the cross is something that when I mean, we have all these beautiful songs, oh, the old rugged cross, but be honest, nobody wants a cross. Nobody likes their cross, the things that they suffer. There's a story that, about a girl, and it's a true story, that lived in Russia. She was an angel. She was pretty, she was kind, she was sweet. Everybody in the village loved her. And her mother was very proud of her. She sang in the choir. She was a human angel, it seemed. And then she died at 15. And her mother was distraught. And after a while, she prayed to God, show me what's happening with my daughter now. Is she in heaven? What's going on? And she prayed so earnestly that God gave her a vision. And she saw these maidens in white with flowers and crowns walking in procession. And she went through the crowd, looking at each of the girls, and didn't see her daughter. She said, well, God, why did God show me this? And then she saw another procession coming. But these maidens were different. They had on the white dresses, and they had the flowers, and they were smiling and radiant, but they didn't have on crowns. And she saw her daughter in that crowd. She said, my daughter was perfect. How could she not have a crown? She should be with that other group. And she went back and she talked to Eldress Rachel, who was an elder, a very wise, spiritual woman. And Eldress said, Rachel said, you know, nobody ever criticized your daughter. Nobody ever judged her. Nobody slandered her. How could she get a crown? No cross, no crown. Because of the purity of her life and the mercy of God, she went to heaven. But we think that when somebody slanders us, that that is an abuse and a great wrong to us. But one day, you will thank God for that. You get up to heaven, you look at your mansion, you'll say, wow, this is beautiful, Jesus. Thank you. What, what those windows, where did they come from? Well, that was those things those girls at school called, said to you when they told you you were ugly and your knees were bony and all that. That was from that? That was one of the worst events of my life. Look at the windows. Well, what about that? Well, that's your husband who cheated on you and all the things that happened. You mean some good came out of that? Well, you got a jacuzzi. In other words, one day we will thank God for the crown, the cross, because the cross is the way. The way. Jesus commands us to take up our cross and follow him.